I'm Noel Edmonds, and I'm about to find out how to set up my Scale Extra set. To help me, I've got Howard Leader, who tells me he's a bit of an expert. Howard, welcome. Hello, Noel. <laughs> well, I know everyone will want to get their layout set up as quickly as possible and get the cars racing. I certainly want to, but it's... I suspect not a good idea, is it, just to sort of launch straight into it? Well, that's quite right. There are one or two things that we should be aware of as we go about setting it up. So why don't we go through it together, step by step, and make sure we understand exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. OK, well, we've got our scale... Well, my scale extra set in front of us here. So where do we start? Right, well, we've just opened the box, and uh, inside there's an instruction leaflet, two cars, uh, two hand throttles here, and um, a black power unit. Mm -hmm. I've got some curved track. There's a bit of straight track as well. What's this here? Ah, those are crash barriers. Uh, they go around the around the track. There's also um, some supports for the flyover section. All right. So what do we do first? Well, the first thing is to take out the power unit. That's the black plastic box with the black lead coming out of it and two silver screws on the box itself. OK, that must be this thing here. Yep, that's it. Clearly marked scale trick power unit. Right. I've got that far. Now, you'll notice that the lead has a blue and a brown wire at the end where we need to attach a mains plug. Mm -hmm. Now, the instructions leaflet in the box has very clear instructions on how to connect the plug, so do study that carefully. OK. However, if you're not very sure, I suppose it's a good idea to get an adult, get your dad or an expert to do it for you. Yes. The, uh, the most important thing is to fit the plug with a 3-amp fuse and take out the 13-amp one already in it. So, let's go over that again. We take out the 13-amp fuse first and then replace it with a 3-amp. That's right. So, what about the safety aspect, Howard? Isn't it dangerous, wiring mains electricity? Well, that's the reason, though, for the power unit. What it actually does is drops the mains voltage down to a safe 12 volts direct current, which is what feeds the scale electric track. So, in normal use, your set is completely safe. OK. So, this might be a good moment to switch off the tape while you go and check all that side of it, fit the plug correctly, we'll wait for you, and when you're ready, turn it back on again. Right, so hopefully you have now got your plug safely on to the mains power unit. And what are we going to do now, Howard? Well, the next thing we want to do is get out a piece of straight track. So if you'd like to uh, take out a piece, uh -huh. that's it. OK. Right. If you turn that piece over, you'll find the word scale extric written on the back. You're not wrong. <laughs> now, if you hold the track so that the word's up the right way, yeah. just above the word you'll see two little bits of silver. Yes. And to the left of those is the space where you connect the hand throttle. OK, well, if I take out one of the hand throttles... Oh, yes, I see there's a red plastic connector attached to the end of the lead just here. That's it. Now, that plugs into the underside of the track, where we've just said. Mm -hmm. And there's a diagram of that in the instructions leaflet, which shows the underside of the track and the two little plugs connected. So if you'd like to uh, be doing that, no, okay. take the hand throttle, pull out the wire gently, mm -hmm. and plug the little red plug into that space on the back of the track. Okay, that's easy enough. Now, I see how the instruction leaflet shows an identical space on the other lane where you plug in the other hand throttle. That's it. So we'll just do that. Great. Now, how do you know which way round they should go? Uh -huh. Well, if the connectors are both connected the same way, then both the cars will go in the same direction. Ah, yes, I see. Now, the next thing is to then connect the trailing wires that come off the red connector and out of the bottom of each throttle to the power unit. Mm -hmm. That's a red wire from each throttle and a black wire from each connector. Now, on the power unit, we've got two silver screw terminals. Right. Now, you have to unscrew these completely. Well, all the way? Mm-hmm. Totally unscrew them, and make sure you don't lose them. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, one of the terminals is marked with a plus sign, and the other with a minus sign. Yeah. So, take the two black wires that are coming from the underneath of the track, mm -hmm. rest them on top of each other, then slide them onto the terminal marked minus, and then tighten back on the screw, which will hold it in place. Okay. Right, I've done that. All right. Now take the red wires, which both come from the hand throttles, and slide them onto the other terminal, marked plus, and then tighten that up. OK, now we've got the power connections ready. The next thing to do is what? Well, the next thing to do is to get the track assembled. Uh, if you take another look at the instructions leaflet, though, you'll see there's a very good illustration which shows exactly the trick of joining the two pieces of track together. <laughs> OK, I see. Let's have a go at this. Actually, there's... It's quite a knack, isn't it? <laughs> well, it needs a bit of practice, but once you've got it, it really is quite simple. Look, the way to do it is, you hold one piece of track in each hand and carefully bring the two pieces together, holding them at a slight angle, like the diagram shows. Aww. When the metal bits of the track are engaged, 
Then flatten the two bits of track. Oh, gotcha. Turn them over and clip the two pieces together like so. Yeah, it's simple when you've done it before, isn't it? <laughs> well, you've got to get the hang of it. Just practice it a few times and then you're ready to assemble. OK, so we can put the track together now. Well, first, let's take a look at the lid of the box as it shows which layout we've got. Well, it looks as if ours is a figure of eight. OK, so now we just follow the diagram and piece it all together. In fact, we could just pause the tape for a minute while we assemble the layout and then switch it back on again when we're ready. Right, the next thing is the flyover supports. We have five, but uh, some sets won't have any, so back to the instructions leaflet again, Noel. If you look at the leaflet, you'll find a diagram where it shows you how to fix the track onto the supports. Oh, let me have a look. Oh, yeah, OK. Uh, hang about, Howard. There's more than one type of support here. Yeah, that's right. You do have to check in the leaflet to see how your particular supports are used. OK. Well, I'll do that. Right. Well, while Noel's doing that, I'll fit the crash barriers, which we'll find here clipped together in pairs. Now, these you literally have to ease undone. If you wiggle them, they come apart. And they simply clip onto the edge of the track? Absolutely. But generally, you put them round the curves and on the flyovers, which cuts down the risk of the cars flying off the track when you go too fast. Howard? What are these? Ah, now you'll find in between each pair of barriers there is a plastic rod, which is actually a flagpole. And if you look on the crash barriers, there are two loops at the ends which the flagpoles slot into. And you'll also find in the same section of the box there are some self-adhesive labels which you can fix to the barriers and the flagpoles. Hmm. I think this is going to take me just a little while, so you might like to switch the tape off while I put the crash barriers around the track. I'll okay. see you in a moment. <laughs> Right. Well, although I say it myself, I think the layout's looking good. What's next? Uh, I think the next part's the best part, really, and that's trying out the cars. Okay. Once you've got it all set up, the thing to do is to have a closer look at the cars themselves. Now, if you pick up a car and look underneath... Mm. Oh, I see. There's a plastic guide blade at the front of the car, and obviously that slots into the track. Yeah. Well, the blade uh, on each car goes into the slot in each lane, and it's very important to get that in place because... That then makes the contact which supplies the power to drive the car. What are these in the box, Howard? They look like transfers. Yeah, you may find you've got some transfers for the cars. You just put them in a little water for 30 seconds, then they'll loosen off, and uh, you can gently slide them off and into position on the car wherever you want them. Leave them to dry. OK, OK. Now, are we ready to try it out? All right, let's check everything's connected before you plug it into the mains, and then plug it in and switch it on. Stand by. Here goes. Right, Noel, if you take one of the hand throttles, and uh, I'll take the other... Right. ...and we place the cars facing in the same direction as the arrows on the starting grid. Can I go now? <laughs> just just squeeze the trigger gently and you'll find... There. It goes forward. Yep, so we know which car is which. Now, if I squeeze the other one, mine should go in the same direction. Great. Now, what if your cars go backwards? Well, then you'll need to reverse the connections on the power unit. Now, to do that, you unscrew the, the screws and put the minus wires onto the plus terminals, and the ones you take off the plus terminal, put those onto the minus terminal, and the cars should then go forwards. And what if only one of your cars goes in the wrong direction? Well, then in that case, you just reverse the connections for that one. So now, just take one car for the moment and race it round the track. Go on, Noel. Fairly fast around the corners. Right. Just to check that everything's going OK. Whoa, whoa not too fast, because <laughs> they tend to come straight off. <laughs> yeah, and if you go too slow, they come off as well. There's actually a lot of skill involved in getting them to go around the corners in the right way, isn't uh, there? Yeah, but once you've got them going, as you can see, it races around at a fair old pace. Now, Howard, I notice there's a bit of a funny smell coming from this hand throttle. <laughs> Is it OK? Yeah, it's quite normal. When they're new, they do give off a slight smell. It's just surplus insulation, but it's quite safe. Mm -hmm. And what about the subject of maintenance? Well, let's deal with the track first. Uh, you obviously want to keep it clean at all times, and the best thing to use is a scotch pad. What, you mean the sort of thing you use for washing up? That's the one, and just gently wipe around the track. Now, the track joins should all make good contact, and if you find that on one piece of track the car doesn't actually run properly, the best thing to do is to take that section out and inspect the rails at both ends of the faulty section. And what am I looking for? Well, it's probable that the rails have got bent somehow, so get a screwdriver and, it's most important this, look at your instruction leaflet for exactly how to bend the bits of rail back to make a good contact again.
And when we've done that, we can put the section back and everything should be OK. Well, that's the theory. The other thing to note is that uh, if you should have a crash and when you put the car back on the track it doesn't want to go, mm -hmm. the back axle may have dislodged itself. Oh, don't worry, this is quite normal. It's designed like that so as to avoid breakage and it's quite easily just slipped back into place. OK. Does that cover everything? Well, I think so for now. There are a couple of things that uh, we'll need to know as we use the set, like how to renew the metal braids which pick up the power from the tracks. But uh, the instructions leaflet explains that sort of thing very clearly. Apart from that, just keep an eye on those braids. You don't want any loose ends hanging off which could cause a short circuit, so you have to keep them neatly trimmed with a pair of scissors. OK, so all we have to do now is get our cars into the starting position and presumably we're off. That's it. And just to make it all the more real, these authentic recordings from Brands Hatch continue uninterrupted on the other side of this cassette. And talking of Brands Hatch, it is possible to build up from a basic set like this to almost any layout you want. Uh, there's no end of other cars you can get, uh, things like rally cars, police cars, Formula One, world champion sports cars. All these will be available from your local Scalextric stockist. And you'll find a list of these in the leaflet which comes with the set. Right, OK, let's go. Are you the white car or am I? No, I'm the yellow. Ready? Are you sure? Ready? I'm, go. I can only Oh, straight off the end. Oh, straight off come the end. on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come
Oh, yeah.